Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this 2002 Coleman Utah pop-up camper that my wife and I just bought. So we've been kind of casually looking on and off for the last couple of years for a pop-up camper like this, just kind of waiting for the right deal to come along, and it finally did. A few weeks ago I was looking at Facebook Marketplace. I happened to see the ad. It was only two towns over, so we decided to go after work and take a look at it. We met the owners of the trailer, and they happen to be the original owners. They're a nice retired couple that bought the trailer to use at a church camp that they belong to in New Hampshire. They would actually bring it up there in the spring and leave it there for the summer for the most part, and then bring it back to Connecticut. So it's been kept in pretty good condition. Now, of course, being an 18-year-old trailer, there are just a few minor issues with it, and we'll look at those as we go through the tour. So what we'll do first is go inside the camper. We'll kind of take a quick overview of the floor plan and the layout, and then my wife will explain in detail what she's done to upgrade some of the cosmetic things and take care of some of the wear and tear that's gone on with this camper over the last 18 years. And then we'll briefly talk about some plans that we have for the future for upgrades. And then what I'll do is take you guys for a tour outside the camper, and we'll take a look at those features. Okay, so having said all that, let's head inside. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and let's do an overview first and then I'll let my wife explain some of the details of the work that she did in here. This is actually the first time I'm allowed in here since we got the camper. I'm gonna cut that part out. <laughs> Don't cut that part out. <laughs> Funny. So I guess we'll start off here and go around. So first up we have this area here which when we got the camper it actually had uh, a little porta potty device in here but we kind of thought about it and felt that we just didn't want to deal with that thing we'll just use this for storage it's a good place to put shoes or luggage or dirty clothes you can see we have a laundry basket under there now so that's what that's going to be for this here is the master bedroom <laughs> so to speak Although both beds in this camper are the same size, they're supposedly a king. Uh, the only difference between the two is that this one has a shelf on it, the other one does not. You can see we also have these clip-on lights that came with the camper, and this one is a light and fan. Okay, so next up we have the galley. You can see we have a sink with running hot and cold water. We've got a three-burner gas stove. We've got some storage down here, and of course we have a small refrigerator that we can use. And this will run on electric or gas. Next up over here we have the dining area and you can see that this pops out just like the ends do to give us more room in the camper. This is really kind of nice actually. The table can fold up and down and this can convert into a bed if we need to use it as a bed. And the table also can come clear out of the camper if we want to use it outside or something else. And then over on this side we have just a small couch but this actually converts into a bed too. There's sort of a frame that pulls out and I think this would pull out and meet the other side. I'm not sure but either way you could have quite a number of people sleeping here if you needed to. Probably be comfortable for kids, adults maybe not so much. Um, down in this cubby here we just have storage for tools and things like that. There's a wheel well under there so that takes up some of the space. There's a thermostat here and of course a uh, fire extinguisher if we need it. And then underneath this couch there's more storage. On one side there's just cabinets that open. On this side there's a drawer that pulls out. Down here you can see we have a, an old air conditioner stuck in the pass-through to the trunk area. We had this laying around in the cellar. It hasn't been used in a long time. We do have a drip tray under it in the back so that it doesn't leak water into the trunk. Up here, of course, is the secondary bedroom. Again, both beds are the same size. The only difference here is there's no shelf um, and no fan on this one. We just have the light there up top. And then down over here, we just have another cabinet. The furnace is here and the inverter is down here for the power. This little storage area is where the electric cord gets stored when it's not in use, so you really can't put too much in there. And then up here, of course, we got a cheap microwave from Walmart for heating up water or frozen dinners or whatever we need. So now let's take a look at some of the upgrades that my wife has done to the camper. Why don't you go ahead and show everybody what you've been working on. 
Okay, so when we first got the camper, I noticed it was a little dated, so I wanted to upgrade it to make it a little uh, more modern and to freshen things up. So the first thing I did was I took all the bedding out and I replaced it with new bedding. I got all of the bedding from Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive. I mean, we're just camping, so I didn't want anything too elaborate. So the sheets, the sets of sheets each cost me $25 for a king set of sheets with two pillowcases and two uh, top sheet and a bottom sheet and the quilt uh the comforters cost me 31 dollars i believe it was uh so we got two of those one for each bed and for the sheets what i did was because i wanted to mix the colors up a little bit is i did uh some yellow pillowcases and i switched them with the other bed and put the blue pillowcases on the other bed so that they kind of mix and match a little bit and then the next thing i i did was I when I ripped out all the curtains that were here before they were they were quite dated and, and a little bit they looked a little bit like granny curtains so I took those all down and I got some new curtains so I got some shears from Walmart these were I believe I, I think they were seven dollars per panel and I got four panels the one thing I was concerned about was most of the time when you do curtains you have a rod and you put them through the rod but in this case uh, you know I'm not used to campers first thing is, is they're really hard to take out so you have to use a screwdriver to kind of just lift them off the the track and they have like little holes so you can sew them onto the curtain which is a bit tedious and I was a little bit overwhelmed by it and, and having to do it for all the curtains but when I got the other curtains I realized I wasn't gonna go through all that trouble also because these were very long at first I hadn't cut them to size yet. Unfortunately, my son had ripped one down after I had already sewn. I ended up taking my glue gun to it because I wanted to reinforce them on there anyway. And I found that I should have just glue gunned them in the first place because it worked really well. I didn't think a glue gun would hold that well, but it worked great. So these curtains I got on Amazon and those were I believe $10 for a pair and for those I just glued the clips on with a hot glue gun. So for the tie backs all I had to do was use the excess from the shears. So then the next thing I wanted to tackle was reupholstering the cushions. When we sat in the cushions they were very rough. The material wasn't very comfortable and it was quite dated. Initially when I first went shopping I got a twin blanket from Walmart and I just threw it on the, cu the couch but then I found that my son would lay on it and it got all messed up and I had to keep tucking it in so then I realized I had to do something to attach it. I decided I was going to just reupholster the cushions in the blanket. I got two more blankets and I cut them up and I sewed them together and basically this is what I did. I didn't want it to be permanent. I wanted to be able to take it off and wash it. I made the back so that one end was shorter so I could just take the whole thing off. And I'm not great at sewing, but it's good enough, right? So you can't see the back, so it's not that big a deal. I can take them off anytime I want, wash them, whatever. We can take them off in the winter and store them inside and still leaving them in here. Mm -hmm. And then for the couch, I did pretty much the same thing, except the only difference was for this part, there was this underneath, which I wasn't gonna reupholster. So I wanted to make sure that you didn't see any of that. So I left this side just kind of hanging and then I reupholstered the armrests. And as you can see, it's the same thing. You can take it apart and you can take uh, you can take the cushion right out of it. I well, mean, it's not horrible, but it's it just has a very scratchy texture. It's not very comfortable. It's I think it's typical camper upholstery. It's made for high wear and tear and, and probably sort of semi-outdoor use. Yeah. But it's not exactly the most comfortable stuff. It's not stuff. the most comfortable. Plus it smelled kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> but with the covers on it doesn't smell anymore. So speaking of the old musty smell in the cushions, what we ended up doing is spraying everything down with this malodor neutralizer from Spray Away. A buddy of mine is a detailer at a local dealership and he turned me on to this stuff a few years ago when I had a mouse die in an old car that I had. This stuff worked great on that and I figured it would work great in the camper as well. For the floor, I want to eventually replace it or cover it over with like a peel and stick and like a wood grain. For now it's in good shape so I figured we'd leave it until we were ready to do that and then I got this throw rug from Amazon. What I ended up doing because it would slip all over the place is I got my velcro out and I attached it with velcro along the floor. Now it doesn't slide at all. 
And eventually I would like to paint the cabinets. I don't know how ambitious I'll get, but my goal is probably to paint them white and change out the hardware, freshen it up a little bit, and then uh, do something with the countertops. I've seen a lot of people uh, use the contact paper for the countertops. Speaking of the countertops, one thing I forgot to mention before is these are already sort of remade countertops. The couple that owned this before us, they bought it new, and at some point the gentleman redid all of the countertops with this birch plywood, I think it is, except for the one the microwave is on. He didn't replace that one for some reason, but the rest of them you can see were all kind of done over in that. So they're they're pretty solid and they're nice. They're just not the color that we want eventually for this. But we're just going to use it for the rest of this season as it is so that we can enjoy it. And then maybe in the fall we'll we'll think about doing some more work to it. So instead of painting the table top, I decided the easiest thing to do is just throw a tablecloth over it. As you can see, this tabletop is actually the same material as the cabinet countertops. Yeah, this is that birch plywood that the previous owner used. It's, it's nice and sturdy, but we're just not a fan of the color. And maybe eventually I'll paint it. I do want to paint the legs a different color. I haven't decided what color yet. I put some place mats on for a nice pop of color with a little plant and a nice centerpiece. For the cushions, I liked, I like a lot of pillows. I, I'm all about pillows. Pillows, pillows, pillows everywhere, as you can see from the couches and the beds and everything. And it just makes everything feel so much more homey and warm and inviting. So now let's take a look outside the camper. First off, I'll mention that this is a 15 foot long box, including the front trunk area here. It's got the two king size pop outs like we mentioned on the inside, and it's got the pop out on the side for the dining area. So this is a pretty good size pop up. It actually weighs 3,500 pounds and has electric brakes. And as you can see here, we got an 11 by seven foot awning that came installed on the camper. One of the nice things about buying used is that all of these things that would be extra if you were going to buy a new camper are just part of the deal. Things like the awning, the external stove, the ramps, the chalk blocks, all of that stuff was just thrown in the deal, which is great since we were new to camping. We didn't have to figure out what we were going to need or buy to be able to actually go camping. Okay, so we'll start here at the hitch. And this is your basic pop-up trailer hitch, I imagine. Now, the nice thing about this is that it has the anti-sway bar connection that the previous owner was nice enough to throw in as part of the deal. He even went so far as to give me the existing trailer ball off of his car so that I could use the anti-sway system. Okay, so you can see it's got a battery box with a 12-volt battery in there. The battery that's in there is brand new, but I don't remember what size it is. As you can see, I've got the manual tongue jack with this, but this is pretty easy to crank up or down. And you can see I've got a couple of propane tanks there. The one on the left is a new one that I just put on there. That one was empty. This one still has a little bit of gas in it, though, so I think we should be good to go, at least for our first trip. Okay, so coming around to this side, you can see we've got a nice spacious frunk or front trunk. And, of course, when the thing is popped in and put down you can open it and get at it by lifting this lid here but with the bed out we need to get at it through the side or through the pass-through that's inside so here's a look inside the frunk you can see I've got a few things just thrown in here for now and then in this box are some of the other extras that came with the trailer some spare gas lines a spare stabilizer jack an extension cord just general things like that and then down there on the far end is the water heater so the only spot on this trailer that has any kind of floor problems is right here next to this hatch. I don't know if you can tell there, but the flooring is kind of discolored. And if I were to look underneath the trailer, you'd see that this area is just a little bit black and starting to rot. So this is something I'm going to have to keep an eye on and maybe replace at some point in the future. Otherwise, the floor on this trailer is super solid and clean. My suspicion is, is that this, when it's closed, doesn't really seal very well, so water probably just gets in here and leaks down into there. So just taking a look at the canvas here for a minute, you can see it's in really good shape. There's no rips, tears, holes, or anything like that. The screens are in great shape. There are some spots where there's a little bit of mold, and we'll work on cleaning that off as the season progresses, but for right now, it's fine. And for a trailer of this vintage, it's really not even too bad. Now this one, of course, has the canvas top similar to material that you'd find on a convertible car. You can see the corner of the roof up there. The roof is made entirely of ABS plastic and it's solid. There's no cracks or sagging or anything like that. It's in really good shape. Now, if you can see the top of it, 
you'd know that the previous owners did make an attempt to clean most of it, but there's sort of a patch in the middle that they couldn't reach that still has a little bit of discoloration on it. But again, it's not hurting anything. Okay, so moving down the trailer, you can see we've got the outdoor stove. You may be able to tell that I did put a fresh coat of paint on here. There was a little bit of surface rust starting on the inside cover. Nothing really to worry about, just wanted to clean it up a bit and make it look fresh. And then down here on the bottom, you can see that the gas hose goes right in here to this fitting on the bottom of the trailer so that we don't have to run a separate hose up to the front or a separate propane tank. So the trailer has a single set of 13 inch wheels on it. It's got electric brakes and sort of the standard uh, hub bearing arrangement. Now the tires are in great shape overall. There's no cracking or dry rotting or anything like that, but they are the original tires and I do want to replace them here sooner than later. So taking a look here, you can see we've got the full landing step and this just folds up when the trailer is being towed and locks into place and creates a nice solid side. And then under here, there's even a little secret storage compartment. If, now, if I didn't mention it before, the people we bought it from are the original owners, and this is where they bought it. Now, at each of the four corners, of course, we have these stabilizer jacks, and these work like you'd expect. You just use the crank handle and crank them up or down to get them where you need to. And again, the previous owner threw in this set of pads to help distribute the weight. And on the back, you can see we've got a spare tire with a cover. And when I replace the trailer tires, I'm going to replace that as well. And again, just like on the front, the canvas and the screen are all in great shape on this side too. No problems here. Now, one of the only things I can complain about is the Connecticut Department of Motor Vehicles. When we got this plate, I'm not sure why they couldn't give me a 741 instead of a 742, but <laughs> there it is. So over here, you can see we've got the city water inlet. I've just got this connected up to my outdoor spigot. And I did buy a new hose, even though the previous owner supplied a bunch of spare hoses with the trailer. They just all looked kind of ratty and... I thought it was time for a new one. So down here is the gray water drain and you can see I've got a fitting on here to adapt the drain to this gray water tank that the previous owner threw in with the deal. Now he did give me this hose as well, but as you may be able to see, it's kind of short. So I'm not sure how they had it configured when they used it, or maybe this wasn't the right hose, I'm not sure. But either way, I'm gonna make up a new hose. Back here are the vents and burner for the refrigerator. There you can see we have the fill nozzle for the onboard potable water tank, which is underneath the trailer down there. So there's a quick look at the water tank. I believe this is a 25 gallon tank and it's still winterized from the previous owners. I haven't drained any of that out. I don't plan to use this water tank right now, so we're just gonna leave it as it is and run off of a city water connection. So here's a look at the slide out. You can see canvas on this is in good shape, just like everywhere else. Now, the one thing I like about this, is you can see there's a bit of an angle on it. And what that does is it helps prevent rainwater from getting in this window. The previous owners told us that you can leave this window pretty much open in sort of a steady or a light rain, but if it's windy or raining real heavy, the rain will tend to get in. So on either end of the slide out, we have these sort of swivel locks. And when the trailer is in towing position, these are kind of locked in place. And you just pop them out and turn them and that unlocks the slide. And then you can grab these handles and slide it straight out and it comes out nice and smooth and easy. So right here, we have the external shower. And now that I think about it, this is the last thing on the trailer that I forgot to clean. So when I pop this open, you're gonna see it's a little bit dirty. So you can see it's pretty much your standard outdoor shower, but like I said, I would just need to clean that out real good before we use it. So here's the other corner of the slider. This of course is the exhaust port for the onboard furnace. And this is the power cord. And then down here we have a coax connector for cable TV or an antenna. And then lastly here up at the front, you can see this door is where the controls for the water heater live. So this is pretty much a typical RV water heater. It's got the pilot light system where you have to light the pilot and then the water heater will just kind of come on and off as it needs to. So that's pretty much gonna wrap things up for our 2002 Coleman Utah pop-up camper. So up to this point, I really haven't done any camping videos on the channel, but I probably will be now. And I'm sure I'll be sharing some of the repairs and updates and other projects that we do with the camper along the way. So stay tuned for all of that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.